show up for me. So I apologize for that, but I need to abide by that. Um, and as I always remind you, the Office of the Leader of the Opposition is open uh, and welcoming to all and everyone who needs advice, wants to meet some of the PPC members of Parliament, and, and just wants some guidance in the representation. Where do they go? Um, sometimes they're not sure where to go to seek help for some of the problems they have. So 304 Church Street between New Garden and Peter Rose Streets, Queenstown, just opposite the border cricket ground. You can We can see it from there. And uh, we're open Monday to Friday at 9 to 5, and then Saturdays from about 9.30 to about 1.30. So you're welcome to drop in. It doesn't matter who you voted for. Uh, we're there to serve the Guyanese people. That's what we're elected for. And so, of course, I had to remind you about Freedom Radio that is still running. Uh, and is available for and accessible to you on 91.1 Demerara, 90.5 Berbice, and 90.7 Ezequibo. Well, last week's program we had as our guest Bishop Juan Edgel, and we looked at the what took place in the debate on the supplementary financial paper number two, and we discussed the lack of transparency and accountability. In particular, Bishop Edgel was with me, a uh, member of Parliament, and he exposed the level of spending with regards to SARA, the State Asset Recovery Agency, and other entities such as constitutional, uh, such as constitutional bodies, uh, as the Public Procurement Commission and the Public Service Appellate Tribunal, uh, in which the government is in violation of the Fiscal Management and Enactment Act and even the Constitution. A year ago, August 18, 2016, right here on this program, Matters of public per, uh, importance, I revealed the fir for the first time, you were the first to hear it, uh, the number of scandals and scams that have taken place since the AP and new AFC co coalition took office. And here's what I said a year ago, almost to the day. Quote, this program will focus again on the lack of transparency and accountability and violations of the Procurement Act and financial regulations. I'm calling this scandalous scandals and scams. Have you, our listeners or viewers, considered or calculated the number of scandals that have been exposed by the PPC parliamentary opposition and by some media houses over the first year of the APNU AFC government? It is mind-boggling. At first of the billion, many people thought this was a result of their being new in government. They don't know what to do. Others thought that this was a result of incompetence and ineptitude. But month after month, the public is being bombarded like shock and awe as one scandal is exposed after another. The fact that the government up to now blames the former PBPC government for every mistake they make now has become laughable. These scandals are of their own making and after all, they are the government now." End quote. So on that program, I announced 16 scandals. And by September 2016, the number had increased to 25. And these were listed in a parliamentary opposition press statement that was released at a press conference on October the 4th, 4th, 2016. And so I would love to read the whole press statement because it documents the 25, but I'm watching time and I feel bad that last week I didn't give you a chance to call in. So we will, uh, do, we will try to make sure that you have a chance to have your voice. And as I said, the, the in that press statement, October the 4th, 2016, and I'm quoting from it, the latest tally of scandals and corrupt practices has now reached 25 in the 16 months of this government's life. The government has been exposed with more scandals and corruption in 16 months than successive PBPC, uh, PBPC administrations were accused of in 23 years. And then I go on to list the, the 25, so I'll try to do it very quickly. First of all, the cost of the inauguration ceremonies at the Parliament buildings and at National Stadium have been top secret. No one knows, despite questions in Parliament, they will not answer. The eight containers, the second one, the eight containers um, containing steel, which were uplifted by BK Tiwari International from the Ministry of Public Health compound, worth millions of dollars in the first week after the government change, in violation of a court order. And there's been nothing that the government has done to retrieve these uh, containers, nor to the value of those, uh, those containers with steel. Three, the dismissal of 1,972 Amerindian community service officers at one stroke of a pen. The appointment, number four, of 33 foreign 
what they were called honorary advisors or honorific advisors to assist the government and the appointment of a top-heavy bureaucracy of the presidential and ministerial advisors which have only been partially disclosed in the National Assembly in response to questions put in 2016. The total numbers are expected to be nearing 100 advisors, local and foreign, at a huge cost to the taxpayers. 5. The India Government of Guyana funded Speciality Hospital. The government gave the contract to a company, Fedders Lloyd, that the Vice President Ramjitan had been their lawyer when he was in opposition. This contract was given without going to tender at a price yet, yet, yet unknown and in violation of the procurement laws. This contract was only terminated when the company was delisted, Fedders Lloyd was delisted by the IDP and the Indian government and Exim Bank withdrew the money for the loan. There has been no disclosure as to how much Fedders Lloyd was paid and what work was done by the company before it was delisted. Six, the first act of the government to give themselves enormous salary increases between 50 to 100 percent. And this was done stealthily and secretly. They denied it in the August 2016 budget debates and then September, suddenly an uh, official gazette pointed out there are the increases for all the ministers, president and ministers, by the way. And so, didn't tell the truth, tried to hide it from the public and when we brought a motion in Parliament, of course, they defeated it. Seven, Durban Park, which is an ongoing saga from 2015 December 2016 into 2017. And so, as you know, we have estimated and we've talked on this program at that time in, in October 2016, we knew that they, it was costing about 500 million Ghana dollars. As of today, the reckoning after the independence celebrations this year, it's more in the vicinity of 1.5 billion and going upwards. Then, of course, the president pardoned, pardoned over 100 convicted felons in 2015 and stated this is to be done annually. They were said to be felons with non-violent crimes and juvenile offenders. In fact, this was not true. A number of these persons had been sentenced for violent crimes and a number of them are back in prison. Others are still on the loose, walking around. And so when we try to ask questions, on the criteria for the eligibility of Parliament, the Speaker of the House said it was an abuse of questioning by the parliamentary opposition. Nine, the Rhodesia case at the Chetty Jagan, uh, sorry, case at the uh, Caribbean Court of Justice, beg pardon, and the payout to Rhodesia. And you know this was that uh, the government settled to pay, repay the entire amount to Rhodesia of 16 million US dollars without any negotiations for debt repayment, for debt repayment schedule, and despite the fact that the government owed the Ghana government and the people of Ghana millions of dollars. Number 10, the cleanup campaign of Georgetown, which were, there was no tendering, no accountability, and we know, we saw the trucks and the vehicles and the excavators, we know which companies got all the work and continue to get most of the work, including that at Durban Park, and other work in the city. 11, the write-off of debts to the Ghana revenue uh, by, um, and the nation by DDL worth billions of dollars. And this was exposed in April 2016. It was approximately $5 billion. Um, other companies that had write-offs with GRA, and according to the Minister Trotman, these companies have been con compensated for their financial investment during the 2015 election campaign in the APNU AFC campaign. Um, 13, the local government elections following that, the ministers um, in violation of the uh, laws, the Local Authority Act, in um, appointing APNU AFC mayors and deputy mayors and, and chairman and vice chairman for the six tied uh, local authorities, one municipality, Mabaruma, and five other um, NDCs in violation of the act and therefore we have gone to the court and this and the matter has not been heard up to now. And the Bull, Mr. Bulkan has insisted to continue to have his appointed mayors and deputy mayors and chairperson and vice chairmen must run those NDCs and the municipality. Um, number 14, the write-off by the APNU AFC dominated council to many companies for millions of dollars owed in rates and taxes for undisclosed amounts. And the council is, at that time, cash-strapped, and as you know, up to today, is cash-strapped. 
and it cannot pay contractors for garbage collection nor timely payment of salaries to its employees. The cost of the write-offs that I've just listed uh, before uh, by the GRA, Georgetown Municipal Council and other local authorities alone earmarked in this list of scandals is estimated to be between 23 to 36 percent of the total 2016 budget. Then we have 25th, the 15th one, parking meters contract. No public tender, no involvement of the Guyana City Council, no consultation with the citizens. And the scandal continues to deepen. And so, as of a week ago, or sometime in the, uh, the city town clerk is saying now that uh, parking meters are going to be back on. And I understand today, right now, uh, the city council will be discussing the issue of reintroducing the parking meters after the committee they set up um, apparently did some uh, work negotiations and some consultations with the public. Number 16, the three-year pharmacy bond, what's called the Sussex Street Drug Bond, um, in which it was exposed that it was intended for. And in fact, in December 2016, during the parliamentary debate on the 2017 budget, there was a big raucous and we demanded that we had to go and see the bond. When we went, the bond was empty. It had no drugs and no medical supplies. Up to today, the bond is being paid for by the Ministry of Public Health. Despite the fact that this was in breach of the procurement, there's been several investigations, including the Public Procurement Commission, who took months, uh, quite a long time, to investigate this matter, and we don't know where the report is. And of course, the Public Hospital Corporation Board, newly ensconced, because they removed the old board, um, also held its own internal um, consultations. Silence. We don't know what's going on there. And so the Minister of Public Health, Dr. Norton, is before the Privilege Committee for misleading, uh, willfully misleading the National Assembly and the nation. Number 17, the payment, the government of Guyana began to national settlement of 1.17 billion for Hags Bosch. Um, and the, we discussed this in detail on one of the programs. And in fact, um, the fact that BK International is being paid the equivalent of 10 million US dollars for the entire project, entire contract, though BK International only worked for three of the five years of the contract at, at substandard work, which is why the, term, the contract was terminated by the People's Progressive Party civic government. And so, and in fact, even Ministers Bulkan and Patterson late 2015 both publicly stated that the BK work was substandard. And then we have number 18, two fuel scandals of the issuing of fuel licenses for the importation of fuel to companies that are made up of persons related to top officials or who are top officials themselves in the government who have no fuel bonds, no storage facilities, and no offices. And this is further compounded in the scandal by the removal, the revocation of the fuel importation license to Chinese company that has spent u millions of US dollars in developing storage facilities. And we believe this was deliberate to make room for these other um, importers, one of which apparently um, is the CEO of the Guyana Water Inc. So then we go to the 19th one, the frequent violation of the Procurement Act and financial rules by ministries. And at that time in August 2016, we were talking about 234 million um, uh, being given out in contracts by the Ministry of Agriculture um, and the NDIA for emergency works for El Nino uh, in the several regions. These money should not have come out of contingency but out of the consolidated fund. 20. Consistent requests for information during questions to ministers and questions during the debate on the supplementary financial papers reveal that the government ministers will not release contracts and if they have the permission of the other persons, company and party to the contract. This is an unheard of and a violation of the role of the legislature under the constitution to hold the government accountable. And in fact, one of the uh, lawyers wrote in the newspapers after this statement came out that in fact there's no legal impediment for the government revealing uh, such information. But this has been used as a cloak to hide behind what they are saying is the law. And then, of course, we have other uh, scandals. 21, the establishment of a presidential tribunal 
to inquire, investigate, and recommend whether Carvel Duncan, Chairman of the Pol Public Service Commission, should be removed from office for li inability to discharge his duties. Um, and since the charges against Mr. Duncan were still pending before Magistrate of the Georgetown Magistrate Court, the establishment of this tribunal is premature and preemptive and repugnant to the very due process to which the President says that his administration is committed. One of the matters against Carvel Duncan is um, still before the courts, and of course you remember this was in this context that the Attorney General Minister of Legal Affairs, Basil Williams, had uh, accosted, was in contempt in relation to his treatment of Justice Holder, and you remember some of the uh, repercussions from that. This particular scandal reveals, one, the overthrow in the Public Service Commission, because then they put in the um, Mr. Yard, when in fact, so the Public Service Commission now has a few people in it, which are all APNU AFC associated, and in fact, this this interference in the Public Service Commission, how it works. When I come late in the program, we'll talk about the interference in the Police Service Commission. And of course, we've seen the intimidation and bullying of the Judicial Service Commission and the Judiciary. 22, the Auditor General Special Audit of GCOM of expenditure during the 2015 elections of $700 million. That's another scandal for you. And, uh, and of course, Unlike in other ministries or agencies where the um, head of the agencies was sent off on administrative leave, this did not happen with the CEO of GCOM. 23, $240 million spent on refurbishing the kitty market. We provided photographic evidence um, on what, what was the really shoddy and actually quite dangerous work that had and had not been done at Kitty Market. And that was um, when we did that in September 2016. It is now almost a year later, Kitty Market's still not finished, and again, there's still no accountability what's going on. And as far as I understand, the, the beams that we saw that were broken and, and so on, nothing's happened. So Kitty Market still over a year later, a year and a half later, and $240 million expended, and I don't know how much more they're spending now, um, still not functioning. 24, the awarding of the contract for box juices for the school feeding program to a Surinamese beverage company owned by Rudisa. Remember, Rudisa got the write-off. That was not the lowest or even the second lowest bid, and this will have an impact on the local farmers and manufacturers who provide uh, fruit and so on for local uh, producers of fruit drinks. 25, the award of the contract for Quarry Stone to a Surinamese company for the CGIA project also will have an impact on local quarries. Tulsi Passat, one of the stone producers, has protested. And there's more to come to light, of course, in this issue. So those were the scandals of October 2016 released to the press. And we...